Right, now you see me use this acetate sheet and the uh, felt pen to show you how basic shapes works. But you can use this acetate sheet in quite a different way. And that is to develop how your composition is going to work on your picture uh, using uh, figures or animals or tractors or whatever you want to put into the scene. So let's just have a look. If you go back, if you remember to these four little pictures. Now it doesn't matter which one uh, we're going to use. They're all the same picture and it's really just a convenient way to demonstrate things. But let's take this one top left for example. Let's say you were going to or decided that you wanted to include a figure or two in this picture. The ideal way is to sort that out before you start painting. Uh, but sometimes you can't make your mind up even when you've done a little tonal sketch and you want to see halfway through the picture whether or not the addition of a figure here or there or an animal or whatever will actually enhance the picture or indeed uh, detract from it. Not only that, once you've introduced the picture or one, when you decide you want to put a figure in, you don't know always whether to be big in the foreground or smaller in the middle distance or really tiny in the far distance. So a very good way to do it is to use a whole series of little acetate cutouts. Right now, I've used an acetate sheet here, uh, but these are quite expensive and they're not always easy to get hold of. What's much more easy to get hold of and is absolutely free usually is the packaging you get with all sorts of products these days. And as you can see, this packaging can be quite thick and quite sturdy. You don't need a full A4 sheet, you just need something that's big enough to be able to draw on a little picture or a little symbol of a tractor or a couple of sheep, a couple walking the dog or whatever it might be. And then all you need to do is perhaps draw figures. You can see here, I've got figures different sizes. That could be somebody walking through a marketplace. It could be an office worker. It could be somebody on a farm situation carrying a pail of milk. I've deliberately made the, whatever the carrying, totally sort of uh, nondescript because I wanted to show you it doesn't matter. You don't have to have detail at this stage. So, Let's say, for example, we wanted to have a figure or a couple walking the dog. Well, to walk the dog in that picture would be about that size. We could do the same sort of idea with a couple much bigger. But you can see that if you put them here, they'd be giants. So you'd have to bring them forward into the picture to about there. Immediately, they're going to be half across the church and the only problem with that is that they're then going to uh, get in the way of what is ultimately the focal point and the viewer is going to start wondering well who's the focal point the couple or the church now as an alternative to people you could put animals in we could put a couple of sheep in but they'd have to be that big and really they probably start to dominate the scene too much even if we moved them around so we can take some smaller sheep and put them in like that. You can see that they probably fit best around about there, about the middle distance. We can put them there, they perhaps start to unbalance the picture. You've then got the weight of this tree on this side, the church and the sheep on that side, and the pathway in the middle, and it looks like a battle royal between who's going to dominate the scene. On the other hand, we could perhaps put them here somewhere, slightly more towards the centre, but not bang in the centre. And then there's a natural harmony where the line of the sheep would lead the eye through to the church. So that might work much better if you wanted to put sheep in. Right, now here's a little sketch I did, um, approximately half size of the lesson we did on the White Cliffs. This was a little practice session that I could test out certain ideas that I had when I was doing this. And you see we've got the little figures down here on the foreshore that I've mentioned in the actual lesson, which gives scales to the, scale to the picture. But if we didn't have those, or even if we did, we might want 
something as well as this little pathway to lead the eye in. So let's see if we put a couple of figures here, whether or not that would work. Okay, now if we put this couple in the picture here, that's probably okay. Logic says that they'd be on the path. And if they're on the path, they'd be somewhere down near the gateway, somewhere there. The only problem then is that they're perhaps too much in the center of the picture and they'll tend to cut it off. So they perhaps have to be more up here where they're walking across the field down towards this gateway. If we had somebody altogether bigger, then they're gonna to have to be really in the foreground like that. And okay, you might get away with that because they're probably gonna be with the head just below that hedge. So if you're gonna put a figure in there, always remember when you're putting figures in to a picture, whether it's animals or people, make sure there's a purpose to it. It's no point in putting a figure in just for the sake of it. Remember these figures that we put in were specifically to suggest scale and distance from the building and how far down the beach was and also scale against the height of these cliffs. If you're putting this figure in here, what's the purpose? If you're following the line of it and then running through to this house, that's fine and that, there's no problem with that. But ask yourself, is the picture gonna be any worse off or any better off without the figure? we could try the tractor as an alternative. Well, that's far too big, other than to go right in the foreground. And then you ask yourself, what is the focal point again? Is it the tractor? Is it these cottages? Or is it these cliffs? So there we are. We've got a couple of alternatives. You've got figures here in the relative foreground. You've got animals in the middle distance. You've got two shots here of the same scene without any figures at all. You could have maybe a couple of little ducks on the, uh, on the lake as, a, as an alternative. Or you could have a tractor or a car driving up the lane. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is I want you to understand that when you do these sort of pictures, if you want figures and animals in, they must have a purpose to enhance your picture. Think it through beforehand, and if there's no added benefit from having the figures or the animals in the picture, then consider carefully whether you put them in at all. Okay, you've now come to the end of the Acrylic Secrets painting course, and I've really enjoyed being with you. But it's now time to hand over to you. Now don't worry, I'll always be here as a refresher whenever you need me, and you can always write to me on my website. But in the meantime, the main thing is to enjoy your painting. And I'll see you soon. Cheers for now.